Hello everyone, Mark Stark here once again, Tuesday, 1.30 Pacific Standard Time, every week for our Facebook Live. Today, I am going to share with you um, a, a concept that is near and dear to my heart. And what I title this is a professional-based business versus a transactional-based business. In fact, what I really could say is success versus limited. All right. Now, here's here's what I'm going to do today. I've got a lot of information that I'm going to throw at you today. I'm going to give you things to think about. Um, so, you know, um, when you're running a business, there's a lot that goes into it. That everything I'm going to cover today, I want you to know is an ingredient that I see firsthand that is very important in running what I believe not only a successful real estate business, but a successful business in general. All right, so let's jump in. Certainly offline, if you have more questions, uh, we'll be able to handle that uh, at another time, most likely because you may have a bunch of questions. All right, all right, so as always, I always start off with mindset and thought process because if that's in the wrong place, you can't make good decisions. I don't care who you are, if you're not thinking right, the decisions you make uh, can be very, put you in more challenges uh, than you started with. All right, so we're going to start with mindset and thought process. All right, number one, and I know everyone says this, but I don't believe their actions support it. And that is, you really believe you're running a business. You honestly see it that way. You don't just see yourself as I'm a sales executive that sells real estate. You actually see, oh my God, I am running this brokerage within a brokerage, all right? And how would I interact with that thought process? And I promise you this much, it's different. When you think like a sales executive in the business, all right, you think more transactionally. When you're running a business, all right, you think more, for lack of a better word, more professionally. We're going to cover some of these aspects in here. All right, you focus on solutions and not problems. I've talked about this before. Great business people who run successful businesses, when they run into something, they don't focus on the problem. They focus on what's the solution to that problem. And that's where their energy goes. And they don't waste time dwelling on the issue. Okay, you have a long-term outlook versus instant gratification. Okay? This, is the, this is going on in your mind. You don't think for and look for instant gratification, though sometimes it comes along because even when you do long-term outlook stuff, you can get things, wins in the short run. That's a beautiful thing. So you don't lose any opportunities in the short run, but you lay that groundwork for a successful foundation overall for your business. You forward pace your clients and your overall business. So ultimately, let me say it this way. You see issues, you see challenges that you've run into, and you implement things that lays the groundwork so those things don't happen again. So you're now forward pacing clients, forward pacing your business because you go, I already know what can happen. I've built it in because I've really thought about it. So I just don't keep running into the same problem, the same problem. And when people do that, they go to the one I just talked about, and then they dwell on the same problem and the same problem. And it's kind of this circle jerk that does not move your business forward. All right. This next one's huge. You do not mix personal financials with business financials. If you don't have a separate business financial where you can look at your actual numbers, and listen, there's difference between your financials, your business financials, and all the write-offs you're allowed uh, uh, through, um, you know, sitting down with your CPA. Don't get those confused. You may have other write-offs. Sit down with your CPA, certainly keep your receipts, all that type of stuff. But when you're looking at your core business, you need to have your business financials and be able to look at those financials. Next one, you've heard it a thousand times, you know your numbers. You honestly know your numbers. I cannot tell you how many questions or times that I've asked sales executives about their numbers and they just don't know them offhand. Our business is not that complicated. There's not that many stats that you really need to keep in your mind. And if you know those numbers, I promise you, 
Okay, it's another ingredient that can make your business more successful than it would be uh, without it. And this is big and it also ties into the numbers. You may have heard of KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. And what's so important with these key performance indicators is, you know, there's a lot of uh, important numbers, all right? However, what I advise is you focus on the urgent few stats, not the important many. There are so many numbers that you can really interact with and it can get overwhelming. The question I recommend you ask yourself is, you know, what are the numbers that I really need to know, okay, that moves my business forward? And when you get to, when you really focus on that, you'll realize that there's fewer numbers that really moves your business forward versus, okay, looking at so many numbers that truthfully, like I said, it gets overwhelming and it almost becomes gibberish. All right. So the urgent few, not the important many and overwhelm yourself. All right. This is an interesting one. Your attitude and actions suggest you report to somebody other than you. Okay, so hear me out here. You know, I always believe that if every sales executive had a board of directors, and call it this, you know, what you ink, but it was a board of directors in your mind that you knew you had to report to, you'd have a different attitude. You'd have uh, more clear answers to questions because you knew every month you had your board of directors meeting and you had to share what was going on in your business. You see the difference there? When you're running a transactional based business, you don't even think like that. But when you're running a business and you have this idea that I report to this you Inc. Uh, board of directors, Okay, you're more sensitive that, you know what, I am running a brokerage within a brokerage. I'm actually running a business. And you are not a know-it-all. Okay, you don't come off as a know-it-all. You ask more questions than you do make, or, than you make statements. Okay, so you're really keying in on being curious on a consistent basis. Because you know you're always growing and you're always getting better. No matter what level you're at, you can always improve. So you let you you can let yourself know that never ends. All right, those are just some of the overall mindsets. Here's next. Okay, if you're going to run a professional business built for success, you have systems and processes for everything. For administrative, from sales files, listings files, and client interaction. All right? For marketing, for hiring, Okay, what's your process? What's your system for hiring? Whatever that would be. Maybe it's a team associate. Maybe it's support staff. Whatever it is, you have a process, okay, and questions that you, that's important to you to get answered before you move to that step. Here's one that always gets missed. You have a process for growth. What is your growth process? What's your growth strategy? I mean, if I asked you, why do you know for the remaining three quarters of this year, Okay, you will grow your business. Separate from the obvious, well, it's really busy out there. It's crazy. All right, that's not an answer. You got to really know, well, I'll tell you my process and it's very successful and here's what I do. And you know, Mark, I always continue to tweak my process. See, but when you tweak your process, you're tweaking your overall organized plan. That's a beautiful thing. All right, but without the process, you're hecking and pecking. Real successful businesses, professional businesses, don't heck and peck, or I should say it this way. If they do, they're nowhere near as successful as they could be. All right. Um, you have well thought out presentations. You know, in our business, it's in front of sellers, in front of buyers. You're not just doing the presentation. You have a well thought out presentation and that ties back into forward pacing those clients because you know what they're dealing with in the marketplace. But here's the message. You've really thought about it. When I sit down, I'm not going through the motions. I'm not just saying stuff. I understand why each point is being brought up, why each question that I ask is very key, because it leads me down the path of where I need to take the client. So they really understand what's going on and we interact more effectively together. Um, <clears throat> you don't forget about having 
the desired outcome. So everything's tied into the desired outcome. And as always, I said earlier, um, you're a problem solver. Here's one that gets missed. Okay. And I've brought it up before, and it's certainly uh, something that rarely people utilize. And I'm going to tell you right now, extremely powerful. Every single one of you, I don't care if you just start in the business, you should have an exit strategy. See, the misnomer on an exit strategy, you only need that when you're going to exit. It's just not the case. A, a quality exit strategy brings more business in now, and it sets your overall business up for success. All right, there's a lot more in to an exit strategy than just exiting. It asks very key questions that you have to answer, which helps you much, I mean, so much in the short run, as well as it lays the groundwork for long-term success. All right. And solid processes, keep this in mind, solid processes and systems creates flexibility, greater choice, and additional freedoms. You know, when you have proper systems and proper processes, you will be more successful. You will have less frustrations, less hassles down the road, which we're going to talk about in, in just a second. So as you go through this, by setting up these processes, you don't realize that you're solving other challenges that you run into. But when these get missed and you don't have processes and systems for everything, all right, then you run into that other situation thinking everyone's dealing with this instead of understanding that these processes have helped me avoid or mitigate some of the challenges that we run into on an ongoing basis. All right. Next, in running a successful business, you are consistent across the board. See, you understand the power of being consistent. How clients are treated. And I'm talking more than the mandatories. Remember the mandatories. I care. I work hard. I communicate. You know, uh, 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 um, I'll, I'll do my best. Those are mandatories. Of course you will. Okay. I'm honest. Well, I hope so. I didn't think you were dishonest, all right? So those are mandatories. I'm talking about that next level, all right? That you really are placing that consistency in everything that your client does. And let me tell you some of the benefits from that, okay? One, it will create, because you're doing it that way, it automatically creates more client interaction, which absolutely helps with that loyalty gap that I talked a couple weeks ago. Um, you attract by just doing it right, you attract more clients and ultimately more business. Here's a big one. Clients see and feel more value on an ongoing basis. When you're consistent and you have these processes and systems, okay, built in, so everyone's getting the same service, okay, and the same quality. Now, keep this in mind when I say the same. You may have different levels of quality for different price ranges. Okay, you may not do exactly the same thing for a $300,000 house that you would do for a $3 million house. Okay, there's differences there. Okay, and there's different needs and expectations. That's fine. But guess what? That process changes, okay, potentially based on the price range. So you've still got a process for a specific price range that you're dealing in. All right, the key is, is the process and the system is dependable and it is consistent. Um, and then this goes for marketing too. Remember, there's two types of marketing. You have consistent client marketing, which is supporting uh, uh, sellers and or buyers. Uh, mostly in that example, it'd be sellers. But then there's also, you have consistent success marketing. And this one gets missed constantly. What are you doing to generate more business? And what is happening consistently? Every listing I do, every sale I make, every listing sold, every closing, every client, whatever the case may be is, Mark, I have it dialed in. The same thing happens each and every time, all right? Um, which, again, success marketing is another example of forward pacing your business. You're saying, I'm laying that groundwork and I'm building on my success on a consistent basis. Again, forward pacing your success down the road. All right. Last but certainly not least, okay, the title is You Believe, to run a successful business, you believe leadership matters in a very big way. Listen, you're the CEO of your business, but you may, and it may be a smart choice that says, you know what, I'm not really that leader, 
Okay, I'm not that man. I don't have a manager mind. I'm great at sales and I'm great at what I do, but I'm not that leader. Great, but you still need leadership. You need leadership. That's where decisions come from. So when you're running a successful business, sorry, okay, someone's got to be making those decisions and someone's got to be checking to make sure you've built in these processes and systems and you're communicating at your highest level. You know, we all talk about sometimes that, you know what, we're so busy, who has time to do all this? And the reality of it is, is you don't realize that you're spending a lot more time and a lot more effort and a lot more frustrations because you don't have these in place. All right. Great leadership knows to focus on your strengths and other people's strengths, all right, and backfill and support weaknesses and other needs. Look, tell me a business that really is set up that one person does everything, knows everything, and is great at everything. Guys, you can say it all the time. It doesn't work. And we're going to talk about some of the excuses that come up with that. All right. When you focus, when you have people focusing on their strengths, there's less stress, there's less aggravation, there's fewer problems overall. Why? Well, because everyone's doing what they're great at. Everyone's doing what they enjoy. When you ask someone to do something that they're really not good at, all it does is cause problems. All right. And that includes when you're doing the things. Because here's two choices. Let's be honest here. You either don't do it well, okay? You do it well and you're frustrated uh, all get out because you really hate doing that segment, which causes so much other challenges, okay? Um, or, all right, if you're not, if you're doing it and you're frustrating, okay, and someone else isn't doing it, okay, then guess what? You skip it. So you're either doing it and frustrated, you're having someone else do it or work off their uh, uh, um, strength, which you don't want to do, or you're just not doing it. And if you're not doing it because you don't want to, you're not good at it, you don't enjoy it, so it gets skipped. Okay, either way, you lose opportunity in the long run. A next successful business, and this one I, I've talked about a couple times, is you possess a revenue versus expense mindset. This one in our industry is, is rampant. And the few that really get this, um, I will tell you, uh, without a doubt, will have will not only make more money, but have success in a much bigger way. See, everyone in our business needs to have a revenue-based focus. See, Having a revenue-based focus doesn't mean you don't control expenses. You absolutely do. You just don't do it at the cost of revenue. And you don't make decisions, okay, with expense in mind. You make decisions with revenue in mind and then control the expense. The revenue piece comes first. Example, I tell you, you need to hire, let's say, an assistant. And the first thing on your mind is, I can't afford an assistant today. All right? I don't want to spend, you know, 30 grand, 40 grand, whatever it is to hire an assistant full time to do it. I just can't afford it. And or I can't afford it. I just don't want to throw out that money. Okay. That is coming from an expense based thought process versus a revenue based thought process. The revenue based thought process would ask this question. How much more business do I need to do to afford X? And how will this additional person help me do more business? Do you see where that leads you in such a different direction than I just can't afford it or I don't want to invest in it? All right. That's like somebody saying to you, give me, and again, silly example, but give me 30,000, I'll give you 100,000. And you go, no way. I would never give up 30,000. I can't afford to give up 30,000. All right. Because you're not taking into account that the revenue will be the number one driver of your business and you work to control those expenses. All right, growth strategy, like this or not, you are either growing or you're contracting. All right, I know everyone would love this to exist. All right, I don't need to make more and I don't wanna make less. All right, I just wanna stay right here. Well, guess what? Welcome to the club. Everyone wants to many times stay there. Some people wanna make more, of course. In fact, many do, but it's not the point. 
If you are someone who wants to stay stable, it doesn't exist. You're either doing this or you're doing this. I will tell you what does matter though. The outcome that you want from your business is really all that matters, all right? Because growth comes in more forms than money. You can have different growth within your life that will inspire and be successful for you. You know what? Running a successful business doesn't only mean it's generating more dollars. Maybe it's generating dollars and freedom. Maybe it's generating dollars and more time with family. Maybe it's generating dollars, okay, and giving you the opportunity to expand your horizons, to meet people you would never have an opportunity to meet. There's different forms of growth. It's not always dollars, okay? But either way, you're either growing or you're contracting, all right? There is no, so what you really want to make sure is it's not like I don't want to grow anymore. I'm not against growth. What you want to make sure is I have clarity on what I really want for my business, for my life, for me personally. Once you have clarity on that, now you can orchestrate and tweak your business to support what you're trying to accomplish. All right. Um, you do not sacrifice growth to hide other weaknesses or make excuses of why you don't want to do things. You solve the challenge you're trying to solve. I don't want growth because I want to spend more time with my family. Wrong. No. What you need to say is, wait a minute. I don't want to sacrifice growth. I want to spend more time with my family. Okay? And I don't ever want to miss a baseball game for my daughter or son. Beautiful. Focus on that. But don't use growth as your excuse. Get clarity on exactly what you're trying to accomplish, what's the outcome, and then we work on that outcome. That's the key in leadership, all right? Um, when you have great leadership, you have less overall uh, liability, all right? And that comes into what I've already covered. Process systems also reduce your overall liability. Um, we talked about creating uh, 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 more freedom and balance. But here's another one, you know, and this I learned from one of my mentors now probably going on 15 years ago, Kurt Anderson. And what Kurt helped me with is this concept of a perfect day. You know, when I was working just in the Las Vegas market and running, okay, uh, uh, the, the company just in one market, I was buried. I was buried and I wanted to grow outside. I wanted to grow to other markets, but I couldn't even get above water in one market. So Mark, how am I going to grow out? I can't even breathe now. And having his leadership to help me see that one, you're always the problem. I was the problem. It was the way that I was looking at the business. It was the way I was getting caught up in the weeds and not focusing on what I really want. And I had to make changes and I made shifts in how I do my business. What I felt was a must. I have to do this. If I don't, I'm not giving the service that I want. And the reality of it is I learned really quick that my service levels increased and my time opened up. Even though, okay, I was taking on more responsibility, moving to additional markets, additional states. Now I know, okay, that Growth can be limitless as long as you understand what are you trying to accomplish? What is the company trying to accomplish? What do you want to do based on your strengths, Mark? And then you can bleed that into whatever plan of attack that you want to. Very different than the way I was thinking 15 plus years ago. All right. Um, last point is, look, when, you, when you're running a successful business, and this will be a great litmus, te litmus test for you. You feel inspired, okay? Overall, you are inspired to come in each day. Not only are you inspired, but it's not work. You're really enjoying it. Doesn't matter the challenges and frustrations. We all have challenges. We all have frustrations every single day, certainly in business. Every market, I don't care what market you pick, it had its own frustrations. I remember people would talk about, you know what, I'm carrying 25 listings and only very few are selling. So I have to talk to my sellers and because things are not selling like as quickly as I'd like them to. Okay, that's a different issue. Well, we're certainly dealing with a different issue than that today. But there's always issues. 
The key is, is when you blend proper foundations within your business, it lays enough quality support that you do feel inspired regardless of the specific issue that you're dealing with or the challenge you're dealing with. And when you get there and what Kurt called it for me is, Mark, we're going to get to your perfect day. So you get to do on a day-to-day -day basis exactly what you want to do. And once you get there, it won't be work. You won't have these challenges. And you can now move in a direction that's certainly more enjoyable and more inspiring. All right. A lot to do, a lot to think about when you're running your own business. But I will tell you this much. Fact, okay, to sum it up today is running a transactional-based business is ineffective. It can, it's frustrating. It does this. And I promise you, you'll run into the same problems again and again and again, even as the market adjusts. When you run a professional-based business built for the long run, you will have more success, okay, greater success for a much longer period of time, and you'll be happier doing it. Hopefully today was helpful for you uh, and the information was helpful. If you liked it uh, or if you thought it was valuable, like it share, and of course, follow. We'll see everybody next week uh, for my Facebook Live. Again, always 1.30 Pacific Standard Time. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.